I'm at a bachelor party in Atlantic City, which is basically my idea of hell. We all have matching highlighter yellow Dungeons and Dragons t-shirts, and the groom-to-be is wearing a diaper. And my friends are doing body shots off a blow-up doll that they're Eiffel Towering in the middle of a Wild West-themed bar, and everything is awful. <laughs> but I'm just going along for the ride. For some strange reason, there's a group of girls who want a photo with the groom in all of his uh, splendor. And another friend and I decide that it would be really funny to photobomb it, because it would be because we're drunk, so we do. And just to make things more provocative, I give my friend a kiss on the cheek while we're photobombing, because why the hell not? But for the girls, this was one step too far. They push me away yelling, calling me a faggot, and scrambling to delete the photos before my faux gayness infects their phones forever. Why they're not bothered by the other obscene things that are being done by any of the other dozen people in the same exact terrible t-shirt of whom, some of whom actually are gay and bisexual, I have no idea. Though I guess body shots off a blow-up doll appeals across a spectrum of tastes. Uh, so these girls call me a few more colorful obscenities. And we each go our separate ways. And by separate ways, I mean about 10 feet away from each other because it's $2 drafts and a dollar Jim Beam drinks. So neither group of us is willing to abandon the bar completely. <laughs> I'm just kind of shocked overall, and I'm trying to process what happened. Again, not being gay, this is the first time that I've been hate crimed for it. And every time my wandering eyes look past them, they call me a faggot again. Meanwhile, my friends are still having their way with the blow-up doll. I have another drink. The girls mutter something under their breath. I get offered cocaine in the bathroom for about the fifth time that weekend, and my group of fr friends feigns outrage that I don't take up the offer. I have another drink, and so on, and so on, and so on, and everything's wonderful, at least as much as it can be, given the terrible circumstances. But I grew up on comic books and have a bit of a compulsion for justice, Captain America style. It's not that I'm hurt by what happened, I'm morally outraged at the idea that homophobia like that can still reign free, even if it is New Jersey. So, I decide I'm gonna teach those jerks a lesson that they'll never forget. I'm gonna pour a fucking beer on their heads. <laughs> yeah. That'll learn them, those homophobic motherfuckers, that's what you get. So keep in mind that I've been drinking for about 10 hours straight at this point. But I swear this idea sounded noble or something like that at the time. As the night wanes on, and time at this point is kind of amorphous, uh, uh, it could have been 20 minutes, it could have been two hours, I'm not sure. Uh, but we, conco we concoct an elaborate scheme to seek our retribution. The best man, Dave, is going to rally the troops to leave the bar, and in the process, Abe is going to trip over a chair, then bump into Paul, who'll trip Jay, who'll bump Amir, who'll fall into me, and who will accidentally pour a beer on the girls as I trip and stumble into Matt at the end of this domino chain, and it's brilliant. We've got plausible deniability, and what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> One potential flaw might be that I am lacking in subtlety and stealth at that point in the evening, but after a brief consideration, we decide that that is not something to be considered a... So we move forward with the plan. Thunderbirds are go, motherfuckers. <laughs> There's a note here that says that that is actually the trigger phrase for the plan. <laughs> That's how we know. Everyone gets into position. Dave gives the signal. The dominoes begin to fall. And I, honestly, don't wait to be touched by anyone. <laughs> These girls have really pissed me off, so I just pivot and lumber towards them like a, well, like a 200-pound man who's been drinking for 12 hours straight and is determined to dump beer on your head. <laughs> I don't know how, but they saw me coming. Their leader springs into action before I even have a chance to reach them and chucks a cup of water at my head, but totally, totally misses, and actually ends up hitting my friend Jay, and then also drawing the intention of the entire bar. And in that moment of frozen time, I poured a beer on her fucking head, and it felt so good. 
At least until the security guards swooped in, guns and badges exposed and glittering beneath the overhead disco ball. I stand there stunned and maybe having a mild panic attack, and I'm not quite sure what's going on until I hear that familiar sound of the girls calling me a faggot. That faggot ruined our photo! Fuck you, faggot! The ringleader screams as she squirmed to escape the guard's burly grip around her arms. He attacked us! The security chief, chief shakes his head in that disappointed way that cops are trained to do and says, I watched the whole thing happen. You threw that cup of water. It was totally unprovoked, and you're out of here. She tries to argue and tells the chief that I assaulted her, so he asks me, did you hit her? And I, in my drunken shock, mumble something to the effect of, I don't know, I tripped, which, to be fair, was not completely untrue. The chief nods and pats me on the shoulder, and he says, you're pretty drunk. <laughs> and I agree. <laughs> and then he says, go to bed. <laughs> And the entire bachelor party in our highlighter yellow Dungeons & Dragons t-shirts stand there and watch as the girls are escorted out of the hotel. And the guards even fetch their luggage from the room that they had booked for the night. And then we all get another drink. Because karma's a bitch, but for once it worked out our way. <laughs>